he had a fetish for being piggybacked, literally just like wanted to be on our backs. Oh, so we went bruh. to this yoga, yoga studio. My nigga wanted a piggyback ride. My nigga was like, let's go. My nigga was like, let's go. We don't see what's Harvey up. Jean, uh, where'd you grow up? Where are you from originally? Lombard, Illinois. Very suburbia lifestyle with a close unit family of four. Sounds like how I grew up, right down the street. Yeah, actually. special. Uh, tell me about your, uh, your family. My mom and dad are... This power couple Bro, and uh, don't play it safe. I have a twin identical sister and you know, we were, I don't know, we were just this place that everywhere, all of our friends wanted to come to. Everyone else was getting divorces and my family was so close and so open and easy to talk to. Um, we went to church every Sunday. We're very active in youth group and outreach and the community. Um, yeah. So it sounds like a pretty great childhood. It was. What kind, it of, was. Girl, what kind of girl were you in high school? High school was when I started getting a little well probably just confident i was a cheerleader i uh started having sex <laughs> and also being a cheerleader i felt like i was constantly sexualized being in my tight mini skirt being an attractive set of twins also had its level of you know being sexualized i would just see that glimmer in people's eyes mostly men that would just be thinking about having sex with us or asking us if we've ever hooked up with the same person always kind of harassing in a different way you know inquiring further about what we were into um but we did actually use that to our advantage one one day um which is a good story. We <laughs> we were studying abroad together and this MC, it was like a bar or a club and this MC was having um, a pole dancing competition. And he was like, you girls have to sign up, you have to sign up and you have to be the twins. So we were like, okay, let's do it. We backstage practiced a little bit, you know, got our routine down where like she went low first and I went high and we swapped and then we had a little freestyle and then we kissed at the end. And that's the only time we've ever kissed. But the, of course the crowd went wild. It was wild. It was no I question. Bet they went crazy. <laughs> I mean, <All> right. <laughs> so I felt, I felt good about that because I was like, okay, I've, I was like sticking it to all the men and all the people that have, you know, wanted that kinky twin fantasy, but I didn't want to give it to a men. So that felt good at that moment. And your family is sex, something that's treated as is it not as something dirty. You guys are pretty open about it. Yeah, I mean, of course, like when I had sex for the first time, it was, you know, I was so young. So I think my parents were being very protective. And um, but in my adult life, it's always been easy to talk about um, very open communication. And I remember the first time I my mom has a bit of some boundaries. Like when I started dating couples when I moved to L.A., she I told her I was going on a date with a couple just naturally in conversation. She's like, oh, honey, that's you started dating couples. Yeah, let me just go on a date with a couple like, bro, what? And the crazy thing about it, bro, I heard there's a lot of people that do that shit. I could never. The hell I look like much information for me. I was like, OK, noted. <laughs> Sorry, mom. So, you know, there's, I, I know her boundaries. And with my dad, I don't really talk about sex, but I oh, think. So you, all right. So you guys yeah. are pretty normal and private about it all. Yeah, I guess so. But, but so you, you came to LA when you were how old? I was uh, 25, 20, yeah, 25. From, from the Midwest. I actually moved abroad. I lived in Australia for a year. Oh, you did? New Zealand for a year. I had my first interaction with a fetish in Australia for a job. I was struggling to get by and my friend found this ad on Craigslist for a strong able-bodied women to perform a fetish. And we're like, we're strong, we could do this. He had a fetish for being piggybacked, literally just like wanted to be on our backs. Oh, so we went to bruh. this yo yoga studio. My nigga wanted a piggyback ride. My nigga was like, let's go. My nigga was like, let's go. <laughs> That nigga crazy, bro. Yo, that's a weird ass fetish, my nigga. He stripped down to his, he was in a suit looking normal businessman, stripped down to his yoga shorts, comfy clothes. We stripped down to our bikinis and I grabbed the camera. It was all videoed, which of course had anxiety and fear, hoping that this video wouldn't surface one day and my mom and dad wouldn't see it. But I kind of swallowed that fear. My friend was very open and fearless. So I just kind of took her lead and we took turns piggybacking this man with his hard cock on my back. <laughs> The whole time around the studio. Back. Yeah, he was on our backs. So we took turns um, videoing. I felt good with my photography skills. I was getting good angles. You know, we were having fun with it. Um, it was definitely, I mean, my curiosity too was exploding because I was like, how did this kink happen? Like, where did this come from? So as he was on my back, I, I kept asking him, you know, where it all came from. And he said he grew up in India and was carried around a lot as a kid and just kind of realized that it was something that turned him on. But he was so quiet and scared to share 
share with his friends, people he's dated. He never sh shared with any of his partners. So I just kept telling him like, oh my God, there's so much more kinky or weirder shit in the world. Like, just let it out. I'm sure someone would be into it or just want to please you. So, you know, I think from that point forward, I always wanted to be more open and just continuing to just inspire people to be comfortable in their shoes and their have, skin. Have you explored and kind of branched out from where you find pleasure? Yeah. Um, so, well, I went home when I lived in New Zealand, I went home with a woman for the first time. And so that primarily I was just dating men for, I guess, my eight years of sexual experiences. And so when I went home with a woman, I remember waking up the next morning and there was just like this beautiful sun, like beating on her soft body. And I was like, damn, I, I love cock, but I also love pussy. Like, what? <laughs> I don't know. I was very overwhelmed by it because it felt so good. And then, so it's always funny when people call dig that like, <laughs> but they call it. What did you just say? <laughs> It just, it don't even sound real. Like, it just sounds like it's made up somewhere. cock a doo doo, -doo and rooster and shit like that. Like, so I don't know why people associate dick with that. That's so weird, bro. I remember I was watching this one porno one time. This dude was like, oh, you like my, and he said like the C word with it. I was just like, ah, oh, bro, this ain't the freaking porno for me. I can't even, I can't get jiggy with this shit, bro. Like, <laughs> like watching porn, I don't even like the nigga talking. Now it feels like, nigga, you, you and a whole train on the girl that you watch. You, nigga. you feel what I'm saying? So it's like, I don't even like that shit, bro. Go do all that other talking shit somewhere else, nigga. I hate watching porn with the nigga talking and shit. I think that's for that's for women, bro. Any men that listen to that type of shit, y'all niggas is different. We're not here for you, bro. We here for the girl, nigga. We here for the pussy, bro. You just a, a prop. That kind of made me interested in couples group play. So when I moved to LA, it was the perfect opportunity for me to dive into this lifestyle because it's so, I don't know, there's a lot of queer people here. It's easy to connect with like-minded people. I found FetLife, um, which is a really good kind of like Facebook for kinky people. You can post photos, you can, you have a profile, people can comment. And I just started meeting all these doms. I was dating some doms in the BDSM community. The hell's a dom? I met some really cool, just like fluid beings and started going to sex parties every weekend. I just kind of dove in and began exploring with impact play, like vloggers. I really just love the fluidity of being with multiple people at one time. Um, it was just fun to be able to like go out with these friends and then just end up in a naked pile of bodies at the end of the night. I also loved like sucking dicks with men too. That only happened oh, a couple times, but it was just weird, this bro. really, I don't know, raw and vulnerable experience <laughs> Nigga, what? where I feel very fluid in my sexuality. So it was cool to share that with men when that's just a little bit more taboo, I suppose. When you say with men, you mean other men doing the same thing? Yeah, like sharing a cock together with a guy. Oh like that was just like really awesome for me. I was this is hey, the best oh, time born in my life. Oh, that's but weird. Then um, amongst the swinger lifestyle and sex parties, and that kind of scene was also the BDSM world. So they overlapped a little bit, but there were some sex dungeons in LA that I went to and frequented, met some really cool dominatrixes that would fuck me and that was just a blast. And I uh, experienced with just like some fire and just really started just, I don't know, I, I've always loved exploring and it sounds like you're very adventurous. I, yeah, I would say I Are you am. you adventurous in general or just sexual? I am. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, I enjoyed living abroad. I loved, you know, I've been skydiving a few times. I've been bungee jumping a few times. I, I love that adrenaline high that you get. And I think with sex, it's almost a similar feeling, like an orgasm is just, I don't know, it's very freeing. It's very liberating. And um, the sensation I feel, I don't know, it feels just as good as jumping out of a plane to me in a way. I found that a lot of the experiences I was searching for all stemmed from kind of like sensations. I really got into like um, slapping, like face slapping because oh, the, nah. the tingle, not like- so, nigga, This one time you feel me, I'm doing my thing. I'm smashing this girl. You right here, you feel me? Missionary type shit. It's like slap me. I looked at her like, stop the whole motion, everything. I was like, I ain't doing that shit. <laughs> Yo. I'm good, especially on a white woman.
any nigga do that, you are a real brave individual. Like, you are, like, you'll walk through fire, bro. That's the type of nigga that you are. Because she could easily, ring 911. Yeah, da da da, hit me, blah, 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 bro. And you are gone for life, my nigga. You are done. Like, you are, nigga, it's over. They're gonna bury you too hard. I don't love pain. I'm not a. I'm not into sadism or masochism. I. I don't enjoy bleeding or um, being bruised. But f you know, floggers and feathers or just um, a, a slap, like while I'm peeking and about to orgasm, I kind of channel that sensation through my body, and and it just kind of explodes out of me, p more powerful. I don't know if that makes sense. <laughs> it's almost like you have a very wholesome attitude about sex, but you're just a little more adventurous than, than a lot of vanilla people might be. Yeah. It sounds like. Yeah, I think that's a good way to put it. I think a lot of people do have this kinky side to them and maybe they're scared to let it show. Um, but I think there's a lot more people that are interested in being more adventurous or, you know, they're, they're tired of the mundane relationships or after some time they just get bored for me i think i've always even my first love in high school um he was my second partner but my first real love you know i remember remember he bought a vibrating cock ring and i was like this is awesome and i was like 17 you know it was i think my my sexual experience does she just always call it that like she always call it the c word <laughs> Like, bro, she says it so fucking hard, bro, with the heart. This is just continuous, continued to get more fun and more kinky, and, and they still are. My partner installed this really nice bar above our bed, and it has all our chains and ropes hanging from it. So I can't really remember the last time he tied me up. It's been a while, but sometimes I just like grabbing the chain and feeling the coldness of the chain on my skin or, you know, wrapping my hand with a rope and just, I don't know, adding these elements to me. Um, are visually appealing, but also like sensationally, it feels good. Do, do you think there's anything in your childhood that led you down this path or is it just that you're adventurous? Yeah, I think I think my, my parents always instilled this adventurous spirit in us. You know, they always wanted us to. Is your, is your twin sister similarly in, inclined? She's not as much, um, but she did have a threesome before I did, which was so <laughs> inspiring. I was like, whoa, this is, my beautiful twin and You've i couldn't believe it i was like what oh my god this is so hot and it was i watched it all happen i was there they came on to her and it was amazing but she watched her sister have a threesome she was sitting just watching it like this is so awesome oh my goodness like nigga what bro i think a lot of my friends i surround myself with are very sexual in tune with our bodies and we love talking about sex you know we've always had this powerful sisterhood dynamic me and my sister and i think we've kind of i don't know just kind of used that around us too to create really close groups of friends to this day and yeah we're always talking about sex i mean anal sex um and just yeah oral sex i feel like i do have an oral fixation i love having things in my mouth so oral sex for me is perhaps a kink. I mean, anything can be a kink these days, but, uh, and then masturbation too is huge for me. And that maybe started when I was younger. I remember the first time I ever masturbated, it was like nonstop. I couldn't stop. I stayed up all night. I didn't actually orgasm or anything, but I was just, I couldn't stop touching myself in my pajamas. Um, but now I love masturbating on my way to work. I love oh. masturbating while watching TV. I love having a vibrator and my partner's is like dick in my mouth at the same time. Like that's like my favorite thing. Oh, she said um, something different, just bro. just having, you know, touching myself while I'm getting penetrated. I love that. <laughs> I think it's, it, I find it re refreshing to hear somebody speak so casually and openly and in such a straightforward way about things that so many of us are secretly thinking and feeling, but we're just too repressed to express it. I think we're, I think we're all very repressed. We are. Sexually. Yeah. Not all. It's you, sad. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. It's sad. Uh, I even just um, at my like jobs, like I work at a restaurant or I've worked in bars in the past. Um, I casually kind of mention things with my colleagues about, you know, this awesome foursome I had or I'll share, you know, whatever it is. Um, 
and they're always like, whoa, like Barbie, you're so inspiring. You're like, bringing on judgment. And you look like you're so normal, but you're actually really kinky and you have this other deviant side of you. And to me, it's, I think we all kind of have it a little bit and I just like opening people up to it because it's not weird and it shouldn't be repressed. I think ultimately we should embrace whatever feels good always. How old are you? 30. You're 30. Do you find you're getting a little more, you're pushing the boundaries of, of what you're interested in or is it pretty much you're just interested and that's it? Um, it isn't changing so much. I almost she damn feel like did it's everything already. more plateauing a little bit. I mm -hmm. guess like it comes in waves. Yeah, because it, it's not like you're going to eventually be into sadomasochism and yeah, like I've definitely figured boundaries. out. I've figured out my boundaries. You know, I went through a phase since I've been in LA. You know, the last five years or so, I dated a lot of people that you know, I was pushing my boundaries or I realized once the relationship ended, like, wait a minute, that wasn't, that wasn't really enjoyable for me or I didn't really realize it and had to, um, you know, figure it out, figure it out in hindsight. So I do think I'm a non-monogamous person, but I've been in multiple relationships where it was a free for all. You kind of just did whatever the fuck you wanted. And for me, that just, from the, from the beginning, like the first day, you know, I met this guy at a sex party and we started dating and it was just always him fucking other girls on the side. You know, I was doing whatever I wanted and it was just very, it was too much. Um, it, it gave me a lot of anxiety and we were just building and like falling for each other. So I figured out that, you know, if I ever have a you relationship. Were, you, you were falling for each other, but you're cheating constantly? It, well, yeah, exactly. But with consent, you know, I don't like <laughs> yeah, to I'm call it cheating, cheating him, but yeah, I I've guess. I've fallen for somebody before. I don't ever think about anybody else. Right. Well, now my partner, you know, we were pretty monogamous the first year or so, but we love to bring women into our relationship. So I've never had sex with another dude since we've been dating for three years, three and a half years or so. Um, and I'm pretty happy with that. Like we've had a little bit of group play with a guy, but it wasn't. So he gets to have other girls, but you don't get to have other guys. Well, I think one day I might want that. But for now, I'm pretty happy. I, I, I crave feminine touch mostly. And so for me, it's it's a pleasure to have a woman in our bedroom. And that's what I want right now. Not to say that one day I won't want a couple. And we've and we've talked about it, maybe introducing a couple or introducing a guy or, you know, I think down the road, maybe that will happen. But for now, we kind of stick to just kind of exploring together and, and it works for us. I would think good communication is key with these kind of relationships. It's, it's huge. I mean, that's ultimately what you need with any relationship. And that's what my parents always told me too, was communication. And uh, with him, it's really easy because he's so, he's just a no judgment zone. And so even I remember when we kind of were in our first year of dating, I had a girl's night, went out with some girlfriends, was dancing. A super sexy woman came up to me and she just started swaying with me and like our eyes locked and she kissed me and I kissed her back. I wanted to kiss her, but I felt so guilty afterwards. I was like, oh my God, Hunter's not here. You know, what am I doing? And I called him from the bar sobbing. I was like, baby, I'm so sorry. I kissed this really sexy girl. And he was like, it's okay. It's okay. Like, don't worry about it. Enjoy yourself. You know, you're still coming home That's to me, solid. right? That's solid. She called, like, though. Yeah. So it just kind of... Like right away? You know, That's I think it's okay to lean into our sexual desires. I think as long as we're open about it and communicate and, and share, then we'll all be happier. It's interesting how different the dynamics are for your, you, you guys as a couple to introduce other women. That's all cool. Everyone's fine with that. But if you're marching in all these guys, I think it might be a different dynamic. It is. And I've had that conversation with him before because it's different. It feels different for him, too. Guys get very threatened by it. Yeah. Like the jealousy comes in swinging. And it's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. This is a double standard. Like, this isn't fair. Um, but I get it. Like, I'm I'm the, the bisexual one, I guess, to put a label on it. And he's, I mean, sexuality is so fluid, but I would consider him more straight. Um, so it, it makes sense, I guess, a little bit. Like, I understand his perspective, but it's also not fair. Um, it bothers me. <laughs> but I think that's why baby steps are important in all relationships. I think ultimately... Uh, you know, if we just continue respecting each other and being truthful, 
then do whatever we want, whatever and feels good. In a big good. city like Los Angeles or New York or, or Chicago will have enough of this kind of community that you'll, you could easily meet somebody that's into the same kind of thing. Yeah, the community's huge. I mean, like I mentioned before, Fet Life was a great way for me to meet like-minded people. Field is like a really great dating app for couples. I, I went through a phase of, you know, really loving just being with couples and being their like plaything, their unicorn for the night. Um, but yeah, I mean, there was like WhatsApp groups. Now there's Discord groups. I mean, kit groups. It's just like once you meet people, you're just kind of. And I guess it's maybe easier for me being an attractive woman. But I feel like when I got here and just met a few people, it was like, whoa. All these doors were just opening. I could go to any like sex party any weekend I wanted or all these cool dungeons and clubs that were throwing all these awesome parties. And it was just like playtime. I just always was like, oh, let's go play, you know? And sometimes I wouldn't have sex. Sometimes I would just enjoy myself or watch. I, I think, I guess on the topic of fetishes, that's another one. I love to be a voyeur exhibitionism too i love to be seen um but i also just love enjoying people and seeing what they're into and my curiosity and my imagination just runs wild and having all these interactions Ooh. with people that you, that you just met and you may never see again does it ever leave you just like empty or at the end of the night you're like what, what am i doing yeah, that's a good question yeah there's been moments i think there's also been parties that haven't felt as good as others yeah and i remember questioning like how these people were serving me and my like i suppose my everyday life and if they were connections that yeah i guess were benefiting me and i i continue to do that with just my friendships i think it's good to analyze all of your relationships but yeah of course when some people are just after sex i think it's hard not to feel a little bit lonely in your thoughts when you're like wait a minute am i pimping myself out or, or is this am i res disrespecting my you body been pimped a couple times, but ultimately bro. i kind you know, of that shit. realize that you just have to f you know you have to find the right people and it all has to do with energy and i guess i keep saying respect but it's just in communication and i think once you find those people that that are into it as much as you are. I think also now I'm not going to sex parties every weekend. Like that was maybe like the younger me, but um, you know, we still enjoy a little bit of kink and a little bit of playtime. Bro, um, do you see her so I think nipple it's just though, also bro? finding that balance with where you are at. Like in her life nipple damn near popping out that bitch. Look like she wanna masturbate right now. Is there <laughs> any chance that maybe you're replacing the risk and the danger of, of a real romantic connection with someone where you might get your heart broken, you might be disappointed terribly with all these little interludes that are just like fun fun distractions, but it will never amount to anything substantial. That's uh, a good question, yeah, bro. Perhaps in the previously when I, I, I would first... think you could feel very empty after a few weekends of that. And it's like... Yeah, I think there was a phase where I was a bit lost and I was um, at this time also dating like a sadist. So he was super into like beating me and punishing me. And so I think I just didn't understand where my boundaries were. And I think I was doing it so much, you know, that was my, my lifestyle essentially. It was just, instead of going out to the bar, I was going to sex parties on the weekends. And so, yeah, you're not wrong. There's definitely- Cause when love hits you, it's a miracle. Right. There's nothing else like it. Right. And having sex with a bunch of random people every weekend or every week or whatever is, is not a replacement. Yeah. So at least for me. For it me. was, yeah, it, it wasn't essentially what I enjoyed long term, but I do think it created this energy within me that still is flourishing with my partnership now. And I do feel like I found the love of my life now and he welcomes like this side of me um, and he wants to continue exploring and growing our sexuality together. And so and it feels not everyone. We're very, <laughs> we're very cautious of who we bring in now. I mean, there's also like crazy STIs and STDs right now. I don't know if you're aware of this. <laughs> I'm not. Ever since COVID, like people weren't going to the doctors and people weren't getting their check-ins because, you know, it just wasn't well, that was happening before, as available. Yeah. And there was just this huge like bloom of STDs. And there were a few sex parties that we were invited to, but we didn't go where, you know, it's just like little ones where you can just take a pill and it goes away, but still it's like, you know, you, you don't want it, right? So it's it makes me a little bit more cautious. <laughs> 
and um, picky and just aware that that's out there. But of course, when you're having sex, you just have to be aware that that's a possibility. Just like when you have anal sex, you have to be aware maybe some poop will come out. After all these experiences she you've had, these adventures, up. sexual adventures, what, what, what would you say is the most important thing you've learned about yourself, about relationships, about love? Good question. Boundaries, I think, was a huge one. Um, you know, there's been multiple times where I felt my boundaries were crossed, but maybe because of some of those situations, I wasn't really able to understand my own boundaries or even voice them because because I don't know why I didn't just I, I didn't know or you know sometimes when you're put in an uncomfortable situation where you thought it would feel good but then it doesn't you get like numb and you just kind of retreat so I think for me I've been in some um, situations which is sexual assault or uh, just uncomfortable situations where people didn't ask my consent before they slapped me or before they did certain things and it just really made me realize that it's important I mean I guess communication too it's just important to to know your boundaries and what and what you're comfortable with and voice those to your sexual partners to let them know and you might not always know ahead of time but I think as I've gotten older and the more sex I've had and the more experiences I've had, I've realized that it's it's just really important to know those limits and, and welcome them and not be afraid. Like just because this person is able to fuck a new person every week doesn't mean that you have to be, you know? I think I just like dove head first into this lifestyle and 